This is not another boring video on how to use Pathfinder. On this channel I teach you to think professionally and work fast, so in today's Adobe Illustrator tutorial you will see proof that there's only three Pathfinder features that you need to know, because you won't ever need other seven and will be able to quickly use Shape Builder tool instead. After this tutorial you will understand in which cases it's better to use Pathfinder or Shape Builder and will be absolutely confident in your workflow when it will come to Unite, Dream or Divide. You are watching TNT tutorials, let's move on! You can download this Pathfinder guide by the link in the video description. I've created it for you to understand how Pathfinder works. All these features placed accordingly to Pathfinder panel. First thing that you can notice is that I highlighted Unite, Minus Front and Divide. I highlighted them because I use only these three features from Pathfinder. I never use all other features. And if you will take closer look at Pathfinder, you might have two questions. And first question is that how you will create this result with Shape Builder tool? And my answer is yes, it will be longer. And if you would like to have the same result, you should definitely use Outline from Pathfinder. You will have this situation only once in thousand cases. And now second question, why do you highlight it Unite minus Front and Divide if you can obviously get the same results with Shape Builder also? And the answer is, you can get the same results, but there is some specific situations that you will have very often, and in these specific situations, these Pathfinder features will do great job for you. For example, you can see professional using of divide in three types of masking when we create snake and use divide to add color. And also we use divide in how to use draw inside mode where we draw rows. I also use divide there to quickly and easily add color to artwork. So check these tutorials if you want to boost your workflow speed. And what about Unite and Minus Front? I use Unite almost each time when I create some artwork. There's nothing very special. Sometimes it's just simply easily to unite shapes with Unite than with Shape Builder. And what about Minus Front? There is some specific moment with it. And I will show you this specific moment in the end of this tutorial. So first of all, I will show you how to do the same results with Shape Builder tool. Let's begin with Unite. I will duplicate these shapes. They should be selected. Shift plus M for Shape Builder tool. And drag with Shape Builder like so. Minus Front. Shift plus M. Hold Alt. And drag Shape Builder like so. Intersect. Shift plus M for Shape Builder. Hold Alt and delete unnecessary parts. Exclude. Shift plus M for Shape Builder. Hold Alt and delete unnecessary part. Divide. Shift plus M for Shape Builder. Don't hold Alt. Just click on each of these parts. Then just pick this part and apply needed color. You have the same result. Trim. Shift plus M for Shape Builder. And just drag Shape Builder like so. As you can see, the same result here. Merge, Shift plus M, and Merge Shapes. Crop, Shift plus M, click here first, then hold Alt, and delete this part. Let's apply another color here. The same result. Outline. In this case, it's really better to use Outline, but this is extremely specific moment. If you don't want to keep in mind Outline mode, let me show you how to do this with Pathfinder. Shift plus M. Let's click on each of these shapes with all these shapes selected. Click here to swap fill and stroke. Let's isolate this shape. Double click here. C for scissors tool. Click here. And delete this part. Double click somewhere to exit isolation mode. Let's isolate this shape. C for scissors tool and exit isolation mode. Isolate this part. C for scissors 2. Cut this shape right in this point. Exit isolation mode. And as you can see, the same result here. Let's apply this color here. And choose round cap. Minus back. Shift plus M. Hold Alt. And delete this part. Now let me show you some unusual way on how you can use minus front. This is A4, 
RGB color mode, you can download these swatches by the link in the video description to have them here. First of all, you should delete all colors from swatches to avoid any distraction. Then click here, other library and find path to download the swatches. Then you will see window here. Click on folder with these colors. They will appear here and then you can close that window. I will randomly pick some colors. Let's pick this one and for rectangle tool. Let's just draw a rectangle here, deselect it. Let's pick this color M for rectangle tool again and create another rectangle. L for ellipse tool. Let's pick another color for ellipse. Let's pick this one and let's create some ellipses. Duplicate them like so, holding Alt. Change proportions as you want. And now as you have a lot of ellipses, you can use Shape Builder. You should select them all. Select this rectangle. Shift plus M, then hold Alt and click on each one of these ellipses. But there's better option in this case. In such cases, you should use minus front. Just select all these layers, deselect this one, Ctrl G to group, then with these layers selected, select this rectangle, properties, pathfinder, minus front, and you will get this result. Now you can select this object, Effect, Stylize, Drop Shadow, Preview. I will enter zero points here and here, but you can play with these values. OK. And now the main tip that you should learn from today is that in such cases you don't need to use minus front just like this. You can't move these ellipses. You can't change design of your work. And this is very unprofessional, because let's create another layer. Let's apply this color, L for ellipse. Let's pick this color for ellipse. You will continue to add ellipses and to add more layers. Let's select these ellipses, Ctrl G to group, select this rectangle, properties, minus front. And this is obvious that after this, you might want to move these ellipses, especially when you will have a lot of layers with these cutted parts. So what you should do in such cases? With this color selected, let's create rectangle. Now click here on Window, Transparency. I always recommend you to move this panel here. If you will see such window, click here and then drag this panel like so and place it here. We will use opacity mask now. This is very easy, fast and professional. You'll be able to edit anything, anytime. If you want to know more about opacity mask, I recommend you to watch tutorial 9 ways to add texture. This tutorial will boost your creativity and workflow. I deeply explain how to use opacity mask in that tutorial. So right now, just follow these steps. Make mask, clip, select mask mode. Let's open layers. As you can see, there is no layers. You can't move anything and change anything because you're in mask mode. So now, first of all, let's click here on color, grayscale and pick black color. L for ellipse and now draw ellipses any way you want, change shapes, and play with design, like so. To exit this mode, just click here, and you can see all other layers in your artwork. Now let's continue. Let's create another rectangle and pick this color. Make mask, clip. Mask mode, color, grayscale, black color, L for ellipse, and draw ellipses. First of all, I will create another layer and then I will show you how to apply this opacity mask to your artwork quickly and apply different effects. Let's pick this color, for example. You can draw any shapes. 
you can use brush tool, play with stroke width, and so on. Move these elements outside of border. This will make your design look even more professional and interesting. Return to normal mode. I will create another layer with white color. And let's draw another ellipsis. Like so. After this, just take a look at your artwork and see if you like everything. If not, just pick any of these layers. Let's change yellow layer, for example. Enter mask mode. In this mode, you can move shapes only from this layer. Other layers won't distract you. And now you can easily change. Design like this. As you can see, you won't be able to do anything like that if you would use Pathfinder or Shape Builder right after you created this ellipsis. You can do anything. Return to normal mode. Let's edit red layer, for example. Enter mask mode. And just play with proportions. I'll change something here. Very quick and easy. Let's tap on something like this. Return to normal mode. And now we want to add some effects. Before you will do this, just duplicate this layer like so, just in case. Make it invisible and then apply anything you want to this layer. Because if you would like to change anything, you won't be able to do this after next step. So just have backup of this layer and if you won't be happy with your artwork, you will be able to simply delete it and begin with these editable shapes. So let's begin with this layer. This is white layer, the layer that is on top. We're in normal layers mode. Just click here on Release. You can see all ellipses that we have created. Now, Pathfinder, minus front. And now this is not mask. And after you will change these proportions, they will be applied directly to object. So first of all, I recommend you to work in mask and then apply mask in the way that I showed you to your object. So now let's click on Effect, Stylize, Drop Shadow, click on Preview, and you have this stunning result. Also what I wanted to show you is that now you have shadows outside of borders, and if you don't want to see them, click here on View, Trim View. Even if you won't click on Trim View, after you will save your artwork, these parts won't be visible. After this, let's lock this layer. Select this one, release, let's do the same, let's deselect everything, select this object, pathfinder, minus front. And if you want to quickly apply the same effect to this object from this object, just hold alt and drag this point from needed object to object in which you want to apply previous effect. Just drag this point like so, right here. Effect will be applied and color will be changed. It's very easy to pick needed color. Let's do the same to other layers. Release, select this object, minus front, effect, stylize, drop shadow. OK. The same with this one, stylize, drop shadow. Also, if you would like to change shadow after you applied it, Select Object, Properties, and you have Applied Effect here. You can change it anytime. Let's try to blur it, for example, and you can see that it's very easy to apply new changes. In conclusion, I would say that you should keep somewhere deep in mind all Pathfinder features, but concentrate on those three that I showed you today.
If you learned something new from this tutorial, drop a comment below, let me know if everything was clear enough for you and what you liked about this video. If you enjoyed this tutorial, support this channel by clicking on subscribe and what's most important by clicking on the bell icon to get notifications about newest tutorials from TNT. I would also appreciate if you will click thumbs up and will share this video. This was TNT Tutorials, see you in next videos!